Garry Kasparov is the greatest chess player of all time. A world champion since 1985, he meets other international stars of the chess world two or three times a year here in Vishkanzee, a Dutch seaside resort surrounded by steelworks. At nearly 40, the challenge Kasparov now faces is to resist his young assailants and prove to the world he's still the greatest. For two weeks, the grandmasters battle it out in a gymnasium, which has been turned into a playing hall for the occasion. Chessboard uh, in miniature reflects uh, a major conflict uh, of uh, two intellects. Chess is a psychological game, it's a psychological warfare, and uh, that's why the conflict is built in. It's about beating your opponent, uh, it's, to some extent it's imposing your will on him. If we are talking about the top professional players, it's evident that the character is shown in the games. My chess style is aggressive. I'm very competitive. I feel that I have to win if I'm involved in the battle. When it, when it goes to the hard fight, so I, I know that I have to forget all the feelings and, uh, you know, I have to mobilize everything and ignore the personality opposite me and just to call it enemy, quote unquote, but, you know, an enemy without any characteristics. So you have to win, you have to destroy it. It, not even him, him and her, it. I think uh, the question of whether you need to hate your opponent to win and all is pretty subjective. Like I said uh, in the other answer, everyone has his own style. Now there are people who, who find it easier to move through life hating everyone and then for them it's much easier if they hate their opponent to play well against that guy. And if they like someone they may have problems but I don't think it's uh, you know, a prerequisite for everyone. <laughs> Sometimes he, he makes some faces, he reacts sometimes in a strange way when I make a move. He can make strange face, so like he didn't expect this move. 
But okay, and many opponents they actually start thinking that probably they made a bad move because he didn't expect it. But I, uh, for me, it's it's other way around. I I'm happy because uh, well, I then I think that he missed this move. That this is very strong move and he missed it. So I'm happy. <laughs> no, okay, I'm half joking, but in general, yeah, I don't pay any attention on it. So uh, he likes to smell the fear. And there is always uh, this extra uh, tension. When, when playing him. Uh, if you can control this, uh, if you're not afraid of him, uh, it's a very big advantage. It's true that you really feel something coming out of Kasparov, but uh, I think the best is you just ignore it and really try to focus on your game, because if uh, you start to think, oh really, he is such a genius, and he's even behaving so strong, then what kind of chance I have? If he does anything, you know, over the board, staring at you, then I just look back, you know, it's just a normal way. players are complaining that you know you look at my face and you can see me a lot of things because, but because I live my own life you know personally I do not mind what they're doing because I established a, a very simple motto in my life if I play well I don't care what they're doing I'll win so that's why my personal you know feelings my world my uh, state of mind are far more important than anything else I think there is always this aura about uh, the world champion that, um, uh, you know, all laurels have been given to the champion. Uh, the world champion is like an emperor in, in chess. Very different behavior to other players, but uh, well, I would say that uh, he deserved that uh, we don't complain about it because okay, he's a great player, and as as far as he, I can tell you, as far as he plays chess so well, everybody would say it's okay, it's no problem. Maybe once if he if he lose his title, everybody says, oh come on, this guy is so arrogant, I mean, this is impossible, how can he behave like this, he is not a world champion. But as far as he is a world champion, he understands also, I think, himself that uh, people would forgive it. Winner of the tournament once again this year, with an impressive score of nine and a half points out of a possible 13, Kasparov has proved to everyone that he's still the best. The prize-giving ceremony seems somewhat modest, at least in the eyes of the man it honors. How could anyone forget 1985? This was the year Kasparov, then aged 22, became the youngest world chess champion in history. He beat Karpov in a match lasting several months. The event made the headlines all over the world. It was the era of the Cold War, and the chess players symbolized the intellect of the two blocks. Having just been discovered by the general public, chess was at the height of its popularity in the press. Since the fall of communism, the World Chess Championships no longer attract the attention of the media. Only Kasparov's defeat against the computer Deep Blue in 1997 thrust the world of chess back into the limelight. 
Kasparov's real achievement, more than having become world champion, is to have held on to the title for 15 years. An unbelievably long reign, a quiet reign following a noisy coronation, a discreet reign, a reign which, to hear him, is by no means over. So far, I don't want to think about the moment when career ends. Uh, uh, the key moment is to, uh, to realize that you, you cannot fight for the title. So, so far, I don't see anyone who could take the title from me unless, you know, I'm destroying myself. Kasparov cannot resign himself to seeing chess slip back into obscurity. For the past 15 years, he has done everything in his power to give chess a professional status. His dream is to see it become as popular as tennis and receive as much media coverage. He was the first chess player to hire an agent. Owen Williams, a former member of the Davis Cup Organization Committee, now works exclusively for Kasparov. He pays, he pays no attention. He pays no attention to me at all. Okay. So, I had to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I'm planning at the moment for you to be in LA three days. Three days. Yeah. Be the Simul on the 28th, the big dinner for the charity for Mentor, and you meet all the royals and yeah. all the, yeah. the who, the who doos yes. the howdy doos on the 29th, and then the 30th is Halloween. You'd probably leave on that day. To New York. Brighton, November 8th, we'll know next week for sure. So this is the, it's, if it's Brighton here, then my idea was then I go to Zurich to see William, mm -hmm. and then go to Geneva. So that could be one trip. Oh yes, I've got that. Lisbon, this is the details of Lisbon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big chess festival from the 13th to the 21st. Mm -hmm. There's a bank sponsoring it. Mm -hmm. At 3 p.m. they want to do a press conference, mm -hmm. followed immediately by a simul against 30 kids. Mm -hmm. 8 to 20 years mm -hmm. of age. Mm -hmm. Sign autographs mm -hmm. afterwards and uh, visit the chess center mm -hmm. and home. Mm -hmm. Usual fee plus all expenses. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so now, um, I have to arrive on the 19th here. Uh, we don't have time. Yeah. No, we don't have time. This is this too, 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 too. Too tight. Too tight. But I think the TV media thing will fit in there very nicely. Yeah. Probably need to So go, what's here uh, is I am facing a major, major problem at home. 28th October. Ah, ah. So. It's Vadim's birthday? Ooh. Yeah, okay, so I understand. But. Mm, don't get me in the middle of that. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's all my responsibility, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. There is no way that Gary thinks uh, in his life in the same way as chess. In chess, he's very, very. Orderly. He's a genius. He's a, he's a genius on a chessboard. Um, in his life, he's much more human. He he uh, won't like to hear me say this, but he makes mistakes. He uh, he has many different things. He's not. Uh, uh, he's he'll admit to you that he's not a good businessman. Chess is a very complicated game, but it's not as complicated as life. That's why the strategies that are successful in chess. Uh, being um, Im Im implied for the regular life are not as successful. Uh, so that's why, for me, it's very important to recognize what part of my chess intelligence is useful for my daily life or for some important decisions that I have to take from time to time. He carries many of the disciplines of the chessboard into his life. Uh, he likes to know what he's doing, where he's going, what time, what place. He likes to be informed. And like many people, he likes to be ahead of the game. Gary doesn't like to be surprised. Oh, but if I go on the 28th, when I come back home? If home you keep telling everybody that your home is an aeroplane. Yeah, so, but that's... Uh... That's, that, that's, a figure, that's a figure of speech, that's not meant to be true. Officially, Kasparov lives in Moscow. In reality, he spends seven months of the year abroad. 
He's the only player today to personify the game of chess in the eyes of the general public. If he's to continue to enjoy this status, he must travel constantly all around the world, attending one event after another. Star for a day in Besançon, the best player of all time, the living legend of the Game of Kings, Kasparov has come to meet his real fans, the chess club members. Turn for a fee, Kasparov participates in a spectacular exercise practiced by all world champions. It involves playing several games simultaneously. Each of his 25 opponents, who have had to practice for weeks, can hope to play the game of his or her life, and if not achieve victory, at least tie with the champion.
think that the game of chess uh, demanded any sacrifices from, from me, except the fact that the childhood, as we understand and enjoy, uh, was um, not fulfilled, since I had to spend more time on chess, to travel, and to uh, enter the world of adults uh, too early. Uh, and that's obviously the, the permanent presence in adults' world uh, deprives you from enjoying uh, the innocent uh, happiness of the kids' world. The uncontested score of the world champion Gary Kasparov is 25-0. You know, never offer the draw for the grandmaster because then you will never get it. Oui. Alors, un conseil pour les joueurs de club: ne ferez jamais la nulle à un grand maître puisqu'il vous l'accordera jamais. There was there was one game where probably I would offer draw myself if you moved because it was. It was probably equal, Alors, but you know, I, I, when I'm off the draw, I believe it's a matter of honor to win the game. Alors, il y avait une partie qui aurait pu, si elle avait continué, j'aurais proposé une. Which game? Here. Here. À partir du moment où il m'a proposé la nulle, j'ai un point d'honneur à gagner la partie. <laughs> <laughs> jamais proposé la nulle, attendre que le grand maître vous la propose. If I made somebody else, I apologize. Si euh, j'ai fait euh, la peine à quelqu'un, je euh, m'en excuse. <rire> Yes, very good. Yes, yeah, I was told by my people that you sent a very nice letter. In the club player's eyes, the legend has lived up to his reputation as usual. And as usual, he has to attend the traditional press conference the following day. There are never any TV cameras, rarely many journalists, but always, year after year, the same questions and always the same answers. Kasparov embodies a dream. Il y a 14 ans, vous aviez prédit que vous seriez champion du monde jusqu'à l'an 2000 et que personne ne vous battrait. Votre pari est gagné. Alors, est-ce que vous êtes prêt à nous dire jusqu'à quand vous serez le meilleur I have a very simple target in my life. In October, my son will be three years old. And uh, I promise that he will have to grow enough to understand that his father is playing chess World Championship match at the stage. I, would, I think it takes at least four years. So uh, next four years, I must be around. <laughs> so uh, chess is still in the center of my interest because I recognize here is where I can make the biggest difference for the world. Yeah, and uh, an art, yes. I, in, in, in the bottom of my soul, of course, I'm an artist. That's why I think I have by far the highest percentage of the quality games than any other world champion. Est-ce que c'est compatible la vie de couple, la vie de famille, avec euh, votre titre de champion du monde qui est toujours sur les parents et par vous My first marriage didn't work, the second one is getting better. <laughs> On a prétendu que le cerveau d'Einstein était un peu plus lourd que celui des autres hommes. Pensez-vous la même chose du vôtre Yeah, I... I don't know, I... Uh, you know... The bad thing that I will, I will never know whether it's true or not. Parmi les meilleurs du monde, il y a eu Schwarzenegger, qui était le meilleur en interrophilie. À quand Gary Kasparov au, euh, au cinéma Non, je ne sais pas. Vous savez, il semble que la um, production de Hollywood requiert des muscles plus que l'intellect. <laughs> 
when I just express my views. I'm, I'm very open with my views. I don't want to hide it. If I believe something is wrong, I say something is wrong. So when you m m mix this uh, uh, openness with uh, the fact that I'm on the top, lonely on the top for such a long period, you may easily uh, describe um, this arrogance as being presented in, in the chess press uh, and uh, uh, this view about Gary Kasparov's character that is being uh, mm, uh, expressed by many of my competitors. <laughs> Tired of the chess world which he believes lacks professionalism, weary of the sarcastic remarks of envious people, Kasparov stops dashing about the world for one month every year. Each summer he rents a house on the Croatian coast and year after year he spends his days in identical fashion. The mornings are taken up with physical training. For him, each exercise is an opportunity to prove he can go beyond his limit. Everything is counted and measured. That's why I'm still world champion at this 36. <laughs> That's one of the answers. Okay, so we have to go inside because we have this stuff inside. Lunch is at 2.30 every day. The entire Kasparov clan gathers together. All his loyal followers are here. Alexandra Shakarov, his coach since 1973. Yuri Dokoyan, his second coach. Don Antoine Blanchapira, a close friend. Alexandra Polkovsky, his personal doctor. Nelly Denisenko, a family friend. And Clara Kasparova, his mother, the heart and soul of the group. The atmosphere in Croatia reminds her of her hometown of Baku in Azerbaijan. It was here in 1969 that Kasparov discovered chess at the age of six. Хорошо помнят весенний день, открытое окно на кухне, мы сидим за завтраком, было воскресенье. Накануне мы с Кимочкой, с Карикиным отцом, решали шахматную задачу. И вот утром, значит, когда посмотрели, Ким говорит, интересно, почему не получается вот на третьем ходу что-то так. Гарри говорит, потому что надо поставить не ферзя, а коня вместо пешки. То есть это пешка превращения фигур, когда он доходит до конца. Он у него посмотрел, говорит, а ты что, шахматы знаешь? Мы его не учили шахматам совершенно. Он говорит, ну я знаю, как ему надо поставить мат. Тогда отец понял, что его надо учить шахматам. Через месяц, конечно, он уже прекрасно играл. И ну, меня уже начал даже обыгрывать. Но это было тяжелое время в семье, потому что, когда Гарику было 7 лет, отец его, мой муж, скончался от лимфосарком. Я э, с того момента, как Ким скончался, я, конечно, вся уже была посвящена только Гарику. Надо было э, найти время, организовать так, чтобы он мог очень много времени уделить и шахматам, 
и школьной программе, а главное – чтению книг. Конечно, один из очень важных вопросов был такой у него уже в девятом классе. Вот верю ли я вообще в коммунизм? Ведь мы росли, росли все-таки в обществе, где цель жизни – это было коммунистическое общество. Вот. Но здесь мы очень быстро поняли друг друга, и я сказала, что, конечно, нет, это невозможно. Он говорит, я тоже так думаю. Все, вот, все что было того, того времени, это моя борьба с общественностью в защиту моего сына. Потому что мне приходилось делать все, чтобы, они, чтобы он не был изгоем. Его, конечно, спасли шахматы. То есть это уже отдельная статья. И если бы не эти успехи, если бы не это признание неординарности, конечно, как бы он выжил бы в те годы, понимая уже всю, э, всю сущность пропаганды нашей, я, я не представляю. Скажем, если, если даже вот такая пальца получилась, так, так же 3D5, он же 2, значит, пошел, скажем, словно E7, конь в 3 лакировка, лакировка. Нет, просто если он, если входит C6, ну, и здесь конь 3 или B3 пошел. Здесь может, может быть конь 3 уже есть, но B3 пошел. Afternoons are devoted to mental training in the basement. Only two coaches and three computers to assist him. It has to be said that his memory is phenomenal, extraordinary. Kasparov remembers all the figures and dates he has read, all the telephone numbers he has dialed, and, of course, all the games he's played, including the simultaneous matches. He prefers not to talk about this topic as if this physiological gift explained everything, as if it reduced him to a mere cerebral abnormality. Kasparov will go down in the history of chess as the player who brought modern technology into contact with the game. For him, this is the only way to further the popularity of chess. After computers, he's now tackling the internet. In Tel Aviv, 15 people have been developing a website named after him. Today, 6,000 miles from home, he's inaugurating the new offices. I'm sure that this uh, small celebration today here is just the beginning of a very, very long and successful road. Uh, I'm sure we'll build what was meant to be Club Kasparov, which is the most sophisticated 24 hours chess service for anyone who plays chess, who likes chess, who wants to know more about the game. And the uh, next generation that will enter the game of chess, I'm sure will learn chess from Club Kasparov. So that's our ultimate goal, that we'll uh, Okay, we're not going to be a monopoly like Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll try to, 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 to be monopoly through the competition because I believe that uh, we have a unique potential. We, we have an opportunity to benefit from um, uh, Russian Soviet chess brains, Israeli high tech, and, uh, you know, the... the American uh, money. <laughs> yeah, money is still Israeli, but American market. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead, let's improve our position, and let's become the dominant force in the world of chess. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so, very good. So, the first move. Next. <laughs> like, to make, yes. <laughs> like to open the game here with the honor. E4. 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 No, okay. E4. This move doesn't threaten white. Yeah. <laughs> Kasparov takes advantage of his stay in Tel Aviv to play a simultaneous match. This time, it is sponsored by a mobile telephone company. What he finds appealing about this match is that the players will not be physically present. It's also an opportunity to try and beat his record of the number of opponents played. The level of the players is not very high, and for the first time in his life, Kasparov is participating in another game, commentating on the match. Kasparov, or the greatest serial killer of the century. 
מה שאתם רואים כרגע זה בעצם המחשב שעליו משחק גרי קספרוב, הוא נמצא כרגע בראש The king at the, at the particular position is actually loaded, defended with many pieces and uh, it is absolutely uh, no chance for a novice to look at this and understand how you can actually expose the king and attack it. But for Mr. Kasparov, he just uh, can uh, start unmoving these pieces by his sheer calculation. He throws some baits on one side, some baits on the other side. You suddenly see the pieces open up, and in a, just a magnificent concert, the king is exposed, and uh, boom, he, he just brings back, he delivers the mate. So this I've seen him do, this retrograde analysis, if you'd like, this going from the target back. You know, this night has very limited future. Yeah. He didn't make a move for a long time, so I don't understand. Provoke at six. Imagine you know, what he's thinking now. If he's king on G7, he could be, you know, in, in the paradise. But Unfortunately, king. his king is on the wrong side, you know. He made a mistake, you know. He just he forgot that he's king there. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, you know. Yeah. So now, the big king's hunt, okay. hunting, Still hunting season hunting. for the king. <laughs> <sighs> a world champion human player calculates in a way where their experience eliminates 99% of the, the, the garbage possibilities as far as, so the more experience you have, the more you can get directly to the point and, and select your candidate moves in a given position. Even a position that is incredibly complex uh, will still offer three, maybe four logical options to a strong player. A weak human player might look at the same position and say, oh, there are nine or ten moves here. And, well, the problem is a computer has to look at every single legal move which in a, any given position, okay, it could maybe be 20 or 30 different moves. He wants to die. He cooperates. So we promise that this night will be here and this one yeah. will be there. Yeah. So yeah. if you promise something, you'd better yeah. check again. See? Yeah. Check again. He so checks this guy. Rook D2. Yeah. Rook D2. Check on D4. King C2, Queen D4, Queen D3, and eventually we exchange the queen. Instead of having to reinvent the wheel each time, what's the best move here? You think, oh, this is similar, even unconsciously, completely unconsciously. Not, oh, this is similar to this, so I will do this. But to see all the different elements, maybe taking from five or six different games in the past and being able to reconstruct that. And that's very, I'm not sure if it's visual so much as the pieces, because the pieces is actually... The chess set itself is not actually that important to a grandmaster. They could play very, very strong without seeing the board whatsoever, so it's difficult to call it visual. I think it's, if any, I'm not sure if such a thing exists, but it would be spatial memory. Very cruel. Right, very cruel. Yeah. Uh. Now, Shai, when you have an extra rook, you should be greedy. Hmm? Greed is what kills people. Yeah, correct. You're right. I mean, average grandmasters are, were, were tested to know uh, about thousands of patterns. I believe it, it would closely reach 10,000 different patterns uh, in Gary's case. Ah. Uh, by the way, we didn't give a single check yet. Mm. That's correct. We don't give checks. We yeah, we'll give checks. mate. You know, we just, we don't. <laughs> 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 
So it was three hours, 20 minutes. 25. 43 in. King d8. So Shai, I think it's time to deliver the final blow. What's about rook takes c4? Rook takes c4. Looks rook takes c4. Cruel. 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 Go. Cruel. Cruel. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> 43. 43-0. Kasparov has pulled it off once again. But the day is not over yet. Owen Williams, his agent, has persuaded him to come and visit a female artist. She would like to market objects bearing the world champion's photo. Kasparov hasn't agreed yet, and he's not sure that his analytical mind, which works such wonders on the chessboard, will help him to make a decision this time. Except it's, uh, it's liquor. Uh, you probably would stay away from the liquor. I, I, I yeah. it. No, but wine, wine is okay. Wine, I think wine, wine is fine. Should we call it the Caspar of wine? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> well, it's it's from the, yes. It's a candle, but the candle will go down, yes? No, it's not the candle. It's it's I like it's that. Nice. I like you the gold. Yes, gold. It's yes. gold is good. A good gold color. And black. It's a prestige color. Yes. It's gold. Good. It's good with everything. And there is a place to write Casparov. Yes. Why we see? Why we see? <laughs> I, oh, it's my mistake. That's <laughs> all. Is it lovely? It's the idea, yeah. yes? Gary, it'll be a two-fold thing. That'll go into a, um, a store in Baku, in Almaty, in Shanghai, in Sydney, yeah. in Seattle. Yeah. So that's one manufacturer who but knows how to... the best way to sell it is in the, in the internet. That we can do with Club Kasparov. Very, very sure. You like it, okay? Yeah, We're putting it's, you under it's pressure. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So Gary likes it. We have to now. We have to make a business uh, proposal. So, okay. see you next week. Yes. Yes. We'll, okay. Thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you very much. Great oh, job. We'll here. meet next Thanks. week to do <laughs> the business side. Uh, it takes a woman to notice. Four, four, four kilos. It takes, it's very, it takes a woman to know. Because of the weather? No, no, it's, you know, it's, it's easy, you know. I mean, I, uh, even despite Israeli food, I'm still yeah. resisting. Yeah. <laughs> resisting. Yeah, four kilos, hours. Okay, we'll see you Monday. Or Anna will do this. Okay. Kasparov's life is a never-ending series of tournaments, business, projects, and all sorts of challenges. This year he has played chess with containers in Rotterdam, studied ancient manuscripts in a provincial library in France, given classes to gifted children in England, won a tournament in just three minutes in Frankfurt, persuaded the Israeli Minister of Education to introduce chess in schools, played a match against the entire world on the internet and made a television commercial for a smart washing machine in Paris. Eight and two. At least it doesn't play chess. At least it doesn't play chess. And cut. 
Kasparov's many activities do not seem to have prevented him from traveling around the world of chess, where he has nothing left to prove except that he can last. The other passions of a man who feels confined in the chess world are to be found in Moscow. Kasparov only moved here in 1990. In January of that year, the Red Army invaded Azerbaijan and proceeded to massacre the inhabitants of Baku, Kasparov's hometown. Kasparov went to see Gorbachev, whom he had supported up until then. He asked him to put an end to the Russian military intervention. The answer was, yet. So Kasparov chartered a plane and brought his entire family, his close friends and their friends to Moscow. 120 people in all. Today, they all live close to him, with the exception of his daughter, Paulina, who lives in the United States with her mother. philosophy I am a professional player so for me it's uh, from the very beginning uh, the result of the game was was crucial so I had to play to win to prove that I was right so it it has an effect on overall behavior yeah. no doubt whether I like it or not but the the life of a professional player someone who spent uh, years and years to fight for the world championship world champions title uh, it marks nearly everything but the main motto in my life was just to be involved in something where I can make a difference I believe that I made a lot of difference for the game of chess I believe I will make more difference for the game of chess I believe I could make difference in uh, um, in in a combination of chess and computers uh, I could uh, make a very valuable input I believe I could make some difference in, in, in analyzing, you know, our past, you know, the, the mixture of history and philosophy. Of course, of course, it could be very limited because here, you know, I'm, I'm not in my uh, native uh, turf. Uh, at once, I believed I could make difference for, for my own country by joining the democratic movement and fighting communism. Uh, so it probably worked for a little bit. Uh, later, you know, my beliefs about being involved in Russian politics failed. So it's very unclear, you know, what else uh, uh, I'll find appropriate for myself to be involved to make a difference. But I have to be involved in something if I feel my presence is making a difference. Since his childhood, Kasparov has been fascinated by the great figures of the past, and especially by Napoleon. His head is full of the historical dates he has read and therefore retained. Today, he has set a new challenge for himself. He intends to propose an historical model that takes into account the unresolved problem of inaccurate dates, which punctuate our history. Here he proves the extent of his powers of logic, which are the key to his success in chess. He takes advantage of an invitation to meet the staff of a Moscow weekly to air his views. Like Fomenko, a controversial mathematician in Moscow, he believes that ancient history was completely fabricated in the 17th century. 
As with chess, Kasparov deploys all his energy, all his passion and all his skill. Фоменко – это не единственный оригинальный создатель концепции, у которого есть четкое политическое убеждение, которое не позволяет порядочному человеку с ним вообще иметь дело. У нас еще двое. А вы с ним общались, Фоменко? И не буду, я вам сейчас объясню, почему. Ну вот разве в том, что я с ним общался? Ну вот разве в том, что я с ним общался? Вы не знаете, просто он вам забыл сказать что Запад на самом деле нарочно изменил нашу историю. Правильно, что да, правильно. Да. изменили победители. Причем они изменили всю историю, в том числе свою. Они, да, они, они, да они изменяли, они победили. Запад, кстати, в данном случае протестанты представляли действительно прогресс человеческий. Единственное, как они смогли победить вот эту тюркскую, славянско-тюркскую конницу, это потому что они изобрели оружие, они сделали прогресс. Но в итоге они изменили историю, и это совершенно естественно, это то, чем занимается всегда человек. Я опять, вы уводите меня в чисто историческую тему. Да, я, по моим историческим взглядам, Россия, российская история уникальна, потому что именно здесь существовала единственная в мире империя. Я считаю, что все остальные империи – это миф. Теперь интересно, что все люди, которые с этим согласны, они почему-то начинают считать, что история, которую написали в 17 веке, а историю реально написали именно в 17 веке, потому что тогда и появляется хронология, до этого человечество вообще не знало, в каком веке оно живет, потому что просто не знало, как использовать просто, ну, систему, систему цифр. Просто. И, а, так вот, почему-то история, написанная в конце 16 и за весь 17 век, она является подлинной. А, просто я убежден после того, что я прочитал. А я думаю, что ну, я размажу по стенке любого историка в, люб в любых дебатах, просто я, по знаю больше них. Считаете ли вы сейчас, уже после того, когда вы услышали миллионную долю того, что он может сказать, что переваривается в этой голове? Как много мыслей, которые, может быть, кроме него, ну, здесь или там чуть большем круге людей, пока не переваривают то, что может, то есть тот вот десант мыслей, который он высаживает. Можно ли сейчас задать ему вопрос, Гарри Кимович, ну почему вы не баллотируетесь в президенты России? Нет, 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 вы не поняли, альтернативу я вам говорю, альтернативу. Ну вот это я и хотела сказать. То, что Библия написана о России, это только... Правильно. Ну, а что, Библия писалась о, о Великой Империи. Просто центр империи находился где-то здесь, между там, Константинополем и Москвой, то значит, об этом и писалось. Библия писалась об этом. Не укладывается это в голову. Почему? Да. Что там понятно, что в 16-17 век в Италии все это было штамповано. Вся антика была сделана. Почему я думаю, невозможно отличить там, когда вот, нормальный человек, я думаю, уже специалист не отличит фигуру. Ну, может быть, Микеланджело отличить, но скажем... Но Микеланджело просто по почерку. Это совершенно... Тем не менее, да, рядового да. итальянского скульптора 16 века от антики не отличить никто. Вот я бы просто да, проводил да, бы... Да. Все проводил бы в двух подвалах соседей просто да, монтировал. Да, Большой да, дело, да. много за сто лет сделаешь Греции, сколько хочешь. В Греции, в Греции, в Греции. А в Греции вообще ничего не было еще в тот момент? Как не было? А там поломанные веки стоят. Венера... В каком году Венера Милоску нашли, ты знаешь? Вот как бы угадай, в каком году нашли? getting superstition just uh, by their nature. I think they, they are always looking for some facts to combine and then they believe that based on these facts you can create a theory. I was born April 13 and uh, it was natural for me to believe that I should be the certain world champion. Scarpa was the 12th world champion. So, and when I beat him in 85 and I won a title, so I... Uh, Uh, obviously, uh, was looking for some more evidence, and it's easy to find evidence because the match was not over in '84, but in '85. Eight plus five makes 13, and then you you continue this search. So, to make 13 your special number makes you different from other people because many people don't like 13. So that's already a reason to be proud. Now in 
там длинный. Ну, там, не, нет, там на нищу еще белые играли. Король F7, Король F6, Король F6. Или нет, нищая была. А, пере... у черных перевес был, да. Она, она кстати, здесь, по-моему, тоже есть. Там тоже здесь есть. Не, она стала замкнуться. Ну, подумайте, что она сразу подумает. Не, ну, она на черную рыбу. Рыбу вообще не делала. Не, ну, конечно, жалко. Еще какой-то тактических возможностей. Я вижу, что это 